your door with confidence, to enter your house with diligence, and to worship you with humility. Accept our prayers and answer our petitions, and we shall give glory to you with joy, now and forever. be with the church and their children. My being proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit finds joy in God, my Savior. Mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. the majesty of God who humbled himself and exalted the humble virgin who became man who, who saved mankind the most high whose meekness exalted the humble glory and honor are due to him now and forever As we praise and glorify with hymns the blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we ask her to petition her divine Son, saying, O Lord, through the prayers of your Mother, keep away from earth and all its inhabitants the scourge of wrath. Eliminate all its dangers and disturbances, Protect us from war, captivity, famine, and plague. Have compassion upon our weaknesses, comfort our sick, heal the poor, and deliver the oppressed. Enable us to lead holy lives, give rest to the faithful departed, and grant us a happy death that we may glorify you now and forever.
God, on this, the day of your commemoration as Our Lady of Lebanon, we offer our prayers to your Son. Petition him to watch over his church and over all her children. May her clergy serve with reverence and with sincerity. And may all who dwell within her know mercy and compassion. And we will glorify and thank him now and forever. fitting to remember the Holy Virgin Mary because she carried in her womb God who sustains the universe. A reading from the book of James. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish of the children forever. You, who is wise and understand, excuse me, who among you is wise and understanding, by, this, by his good life, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you, if you have bitter je jealousy, selfish ambitions in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This wisdom is not such as it come down, comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, without uncertainty or incertainty. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in the peace by those who make it. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Alleluia. But it's more that we would give out the praise of the Lord and the rest of the church. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. And standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own. This is the truth, peace be with you. Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We have a document from the Eastern Syriac Church dating from the end of the 17th century, 1689 in fact. And it is a calendar, liturgical calendar. And there's a very interesting point, and strange, actually quite unique, as a commentary written, the rubrics. So when you look in your book, we have those italicized and those red letters that are giving directions. Those are rubrics. Rubric just comes from the Latin word rubra because the printing and the writing of it was just used with red ink. So rubric actually just means red. Reddish, literally, as an adjective. Rubra is red, rubrica, rubricus means reddish. And so they're the reddish letters. And so in the reddish letters of this calendar, for the Feast of the Annunciation, so March 25th, <clears throat> the rubric says that this day is commemorated no matter what other day falls on it, even if it should be Good Friday. Even on Good Friday, Good Friday would be set aside and the Annunciation will be celebrated. That's the rubric. But it goes on to explain because if not for the Annunciation, our mystery, the mystery of our salvation would never have taken place. And so even to commemorate the death on Calvary in the 17th century, their calendar said, no, this day, the Annunciation takes precedence. It's an interesting point. 
It happens rarely, but it does happen that March 25th will coincide with Good Friday. It did, I think, about eight or 10 years ago. And for the fathers of the church, I, we've mentioned that March 25th also has for them the meaning of the creation of the world, the death of our Lord on Good Friday. And so these correspondences also have the meaning behind the Annunciation. It is an interesting rubric and it's quite unique of any other text that we have. So the question would be, well, the, re the reason is given. But the Annunciation, if it were not for the Incarnation, Good Friday, the Resurrection, none of these things would have taken place. So the Annunciation holds a very pivotal and central knowledge, appreciation within Catholicism, within Christianity. And we never really stop and think about it, because of course we don't all storm into the churches on March 25th, do we? We don't look at the Annunciation as being so fundamental as they did for, for most of the centuries of the Christian church. The Annunciation, March 25th, those of you, we recently celebrated the Feast of St. Louis de Montfort, those of you who have made the devotion of servitude, it's called by St. Mary de Montfort, your consecration through the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Annunciation carries with it a plenary indulgence for members who have done that in the spirituality of St. Louis de Montfort. So the church still has the understanding of the importance of it, but we've lost it as common people. We've lost it among the, the, the rank and file of the church, if you like. And so on a day which commemorates the first, this first Sunday of May, which commemorates Our Lady as Queen of Lebanon, Queen of the state, of course, but even before the state existed, she was Queen of the Lebanon mountains, the White Mountains, the mountains, the range that have given refuge to the Maronites who were able to take refuge there from the coming of the Muslims, pulling up out of the plains of Syria to be able to be in the mountains and to defend themselves and to give refuge to other Christians who were not necessarily Maronites, but to other Christians who also needed refuge. And over all of that refuge and that protection of the mountains of Lebanon is the Queen of Heaven. And so we commemorate Our Lady of Lebanon, not because she's a patroness of a national state, because she is a patroness who has guarded and protected Beit Marun for centuries many, many centuries. And so the second collection today, as it is every year, is for our shrine, the national, the national Shrine of Our Lady of Lebanon, which is in Ohio, which this year we did try to start, we began to organize a pilgrimage, a Marian pilgrimage to go this year as a, as a parish. But it became too complicated with all the gas prices and then some of the companies stopped talking to us, I don't know. It was a very strange and very, non-customer service approach to things. And so with the exercises coming up in a couple of weeks and everything else being organized, it's like, we'll just drop it for now, perhaps next year. We thought this year would be good because the assumption fell on a Monday. And so most of the days of travel would have encompassed Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which would have been easier for time off. Next year, of course, it would be Tuesday. But the assumption is the great celebration for us. And it's a three-day celebration in Ohio. So this shrine of Our Lady of Lebanon, and Our Lady being Queen of Lebanon, is as protector. She's protected. But let's go back and consider why the Annunciation in an Eastern Syriac liturgical calendar would say it would take the place of everything, including Good Friday, if they corresponded and coincided together. We don't stop and often think that the entire salvation of the world is dependent upon that conversation between the angel Gabriel and this teenage girl in Nazareth 2,000 years ago. The same way that humanity fell, the process of the collapse of original sin and of the collapse of, of Adam begins by the first woman dialoguing with the serpent in the garden, talking back and forth trying to reason with evil, trying to compromise with evil, trying to say, well, it's all not that bad. One of the most famous aspects of that conversation is when she says, well, God says that if we partake of this tree, we might die. But God didn't say that, it's a lie. 
God said, the day that you partake of this tree, you will die the death. In other words, you will most certainly die. So it's not about fruit. It's about the dialogue with evil. It's about the compromise and justifications of things. And it's about lying. And so the same way that that is the process of the fall that we call original sin, the fall of humanity. So the dialogue that takes place between the pure virgin, remember both of these women are completely stainless at the beginning of their conversations. Eve has no sin at this point. She is committing an act of violence upon her nature of lucidity and grace and beauty. She is committing an act of violence just simply to exert her own ego, lying. Because she begins by looking at the attractiveness of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, and begins this whole dialogue. On the other hand, this other stainless woman, with the coming of another angel, is completely different. So that when, first of all, she's greeted, that in the Greek it says, kakaritomene, you who have been highly favored. In English, we say, full of grace, make it a phrase. But it's a proper name in the salutation. And we're told, that contrary to the egoism of the first woman, this new woman is completely different. She's disturbed and confused by this salutation. Why are you giving me this name? And that's when the angel then says to her, do not fear, Mary, and uses her personal name. But it becomes the beginning of this discussion between the new, the new woman and the angel Gabriel and the old, the first woman in the garden. And you parallel between the two of these. The Annunciation commemorates the moment in which everything of salvation is dependent because this woman is free. God doesn't come down and insist that she become the mother of God. The Annunciation is to come and to ask for her freedom to enter into this plan of salvation. Uniquely, completely uniquely. Which of course we know she does. But it's the whole discussion that goes back and forth that is commemorated on the Feast of the Annunciation. Where you have in the question of the spirit that will come upon you, the power of the Most High will come upon you. For the Syriac fathers, the spirit, of course, is the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit. But the power, the power of the Father, the power of the Most High, the power is the word that comes to this woman in her acceptance of what God is asking her to do. So it is this dialogue, this discussion between heaven and earth, which is from this woman, why the Annunciation stands central to everything. Good Friday, Good Friday would never have taken place if she had never given birth to the Messiah. The redemption would never have taken place if Good Friday had never taken place. And so why do we honor? Because a lot of times people are confused as why do Catholics honor the Blessed Virgin Mary? As that is the primary thing. She is the link between a broken and fallen in humanity to the restoration of humanity and of salvation, all dependent upon the acquiescence, the acceptance, and the consent of this one woman. So it's quite extraordinary when we stop and think about it. So when we crown the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary for the month of May, it is not a sentimental act. It is an act which is to recognize that this woman is the singular pride of created humanity. The child she gives birth to, of course, is God incarnate. He is man and he is God. And as man, of course, he's created. He creates himself in the incarnation. But of creatures drawn from nothing in their entire existence, all of us, the Blessed Virgin Mary is that complete creature out of nothingness who is our glory and our pride. And our salvation, this church stands here today because she has been protectoress of Beit Marum for centuries. I and you, each one of us, have been baptized into the gospel of salvation, incorporated into the divine mystery of the divine nature and its transcendence because of this woman who gave us the possibility of her acceptance of great sorrow, of great pain throughout her life, 
But by accepting that, she gave us the ability to live. This is why we crown the images of this woman. This is why we honor her as a singular example of human beauty. And not just simply that, as a work of creation and a masterpiece of God, but even more because of our dependence upon her, that she has brought us the possibility of salvation. She has fulfilled all the promises and the prophecies of the old law by bringing forth the Christ. And in doing so, she has made us her children and she to us, our mother. That is the meaning of why the gospel was chosen for St. John. Women, behold your son. You take John, and for the fathers of the church and for the popes, this is the moment in which Mary becomes the mother of the church. And to John, behold your mother. Notice the first term is woman. She is the new Eve. She is recreating and replacing the fall of our first mother in the garden. She is replacing it by the beauty of her acquiescence, which is why our Lord calls her woman. Not mom, not Emma, not mother, but woman. Because the work is not a sentimentalistic thing when she says to John, when he says to John and to the Blessed Virgin, your mother, your son, this is not an act of emotional inheritance. This is the work of redemption which is why she is called woman. And so between these things, we see John's reaction to her. And a lot of times in the translations you will see, it will say that John took her into his home. But that's not really the correct translation. In the Greek, it says ta idea. So our word idea, idiom. We speak of idioms, the proper way, specific colloquial phrases that are unique to languages that are understood, but you have to know the language to understand the idiom. It perfectly belongs to that language. So the ta'idia that's used by the Gospel of St. John is more of the idea, we wouldn't translate it as he took her among his ideas, that doesn't make any sense. But the idion is what belongs properly to an individual. So what we're told by the Gospel of St. John is John and the mother of God understand what is taking place. And his response, of course, we hear, we hear nothing else about her. Woman, behold your son. And to the disciple that our Lord loved, he says, behold your mother. But we are told his transformation and his change. She, she is always that intervention of human beauty and acquiescence and consent to the work of God and its salvation. But we're told something happens with John differently. And that he, from that day forward, we're told, took her, we could translate it as, among his own. So not just simply his home. Of course, he gave her shelter. They both die in Ephesus, around Ephesus, in what's now modern-day Turkey. But it's more than just sheltering her for the next years of her life. He takes her among his own. The transformation of John that takes place at Calvary and what the mother of God does in the person of John transforming him, Taidia, among the things that are properly his, making him truly a son of the church, making him even better as an apostle. All of this transformation because again, Our Lady is protectress. She is nurturer. She is a mother, and we are on this day Catholics, baptized, Maronites, quite happily and quite proudly because of her generosity on the feast day that we now call the Annunciation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father, and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the blessed mother of God, her Saint Joseph, her spouse, the chosen one, our holy father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and the prophet Jeremiah. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
experiência. Aleluia! St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give you the greeting of peace, one another with the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to God. Reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, and you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Angels bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks 
of the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one and consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us, for he is your only Son. Waksoya bin Tarmita Karomara Sabakula Mene Kulho Hono Denita Fahro Deal Dahlo Faikun Wahlov Sagi Metahaseo Metihel Hosoya Hame Waho. Amen. 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 Sabeshtawa mehne kulhu Hono denita Dimoho dila diyati ki khadato Dakhlo faikun wakhlov sagiyem Ete sharu metiyem Khusunyon khawme wa khawye dan qadam alameen Amen. Do this in memory of me. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await second coming, we implore your mercy and compassion, we ask for the forgiveness of sins, may your mercy rest upon us. O word of God who can comprehend that you willingly emptied 
lift yourself of your divine glory. Who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin? Who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured? Who can praise your plan of salvation for us? We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We profess our faith in you and we ask you. of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, the body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. 
For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the holy fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious Saint Stephen, the archdeacon, and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Departed, who have gone to you from this altar from every place throughout the world. Grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. And rest, O oh God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O oh Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions hidden in sin, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you. And join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, the saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy 
that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo in the Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts. And let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory to you now and to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one, O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo Elokorechun. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the victorious cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishments and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.